environmental activist group says it flattened the tires on 34 SUVs in Victoria and Oak Bay, warning this is just the beginning. It claims direct action works. This is not going to end well if one of these activists is caught in the act. Um, so that's in British Columbia. But can you find something odd about the piece of paper in that photograph? I'll read it. Attention, your gas guzzler kills. We have deflated one or more of your tires. Do you see it yet? Tires spelt with a Y. That's not how you spell tires. I don't think. Don't we spell it T-I-R-E? That Y spelling, that, that's British. That's how they spell it in the UK. I mean, they, they have some quirks. They say lorry instead of truck. They say torch instead of flashlight. It's one of those countless tiny wonderful differences between us and the mother country. You know, they don't say stop on a dime. They don't have dimes over there. This was written... In London, London, England, not London, Ontario, and certainly not British Columbia. I'll read a bit more from the flyer. You'll be angry, but don't take it personally. It's not you. It's your car. We did this because driving around urban areas in your massive vehicle has huge consequences for others. And it goes on with a bunch of junk science claiming that your SUV kills people. Of course, a modern SUV has lower emissions than an older even smaller car, modern cars are so much more efficient and emit so much less than previous generations of cars do. And by the way, the car's already built. You're not going to turn your car back in because someone deflated your tires. But seriously, to go after SUVs of any size, rather than the source of real pollution in the world, China and India and Brazil, really all of Asia and OPEC and Russia, I guess you could add the U.S., although they have one of the lowest emissions per dollar GDP. It's absurd to talk about your car in British Columbia causing more emissions than the hundreds of coal-fired power plants that China is building right now. Give me a break. But look at how it ends, this pamphlet. The Tire Extinguishers. And that's their website, too. Tire Extinguishers. They literally couldn't be bothered to buy a spelled correct version. Tire extinguishers with an I. Um, that version was bought by someone who isn't using it, as you can see. And this afternoon, just for fun, I bought tireextinguishers.ca, T-I-R-E, extinguishers.ca, and I have that website pointed to this video uh, because I'm a Canadian, not a foreign meddler like these folks. Now, I don't know what they actually did in Victoria. I don't know if they did anything or if they just said they did. I suppose deflating a tire is different from slashing a tire where you destroy it, but it's not much different. Both immobilize a vehicle. And if you didn't notice when you got in your car, and you wouldn't notice right away, would you? And you could start to drive, and you would, you would notice it soon, but maybe you would have an accident first. What if you drove and you didn't quickly realize what was wrong, and you merged into a busy road and you had an accident or your car swerved or you wore quickly down to your rims in traffic. I could think of a whole bunch of things that could go wrong if you start to drive with your tire deflated and you didn't know. If you ran it down on the rims, your tire would indeed be ruined. This is exactly what the criminal code catches by the crime of mischief. Mischief is sort of a general catch-all for minor crimes that are nuisances that aren't the kind of thing you typically go to prison over, that's for sure. But things that actually ruin your community, really make it awful, vandalism, petty thefts, just generally being an antisocial abuser of your neighbors. This is classic mischief that could actually lead to harm, God forbid. And it's confessed to, and it's bragged about, Hey, didn't Tamara Leach, the, the peaceful grandma who inspired the truckers, didn't she get charged with mischief? Actually, I'm not sure if she did. If I recall, I think she was charged with inciting mischief, which is a degree weaker, isn't it? And, and what? She got 48 days in prison so far. She hasn't been convicted of anything. And she's subject to bizarre and abusive infringements on what she can 
say and do in public banned from even criticizing the government, thrown in prison again for having a selfie photo with another trucker. That's what happened. So that's what a peaceful grandma did, who apparently encouraged some horn honking. She was charged with inciting mischief and thrown in jail. But deflating tires, T-I-R-E-S, well, that's just dandy. Now, I went on their website, T-Y-R-E, extinguishers.com, and they have some pretty bizarre opinions, as you could probably guess. They say, hybrids and electric cars are fair game. We cannot electrify our way out of the climate crisis. There are not enough rare earth metals to replace everyone's car, and the mining of these metals causes suffering. Okay, got it. So they're, they're not really mad at SUVs. They're, they're against all cars, at least ones with brakes on them. That's one of the things they, they're mad about. They're mad about brakes, apparently. Plus the danger to other road users' stands, they say, as does the air pollution, PM 2.5 pollution, is still produced from tires and brake pads. So they don't like anything with brake pads or tires, I, I guess. Then again, bicycles are made from metal, too, and they have brakes on them, too. And the thing about bicycles is they don't really work well in Canada in the winter or, say, for, I don't know, a family or, or a school bus or an ambulance or a fire truck. This is pure, stupid, malevolent mischief. And gee whiz, not a peep from any politician or police for it. But my, my main point is... Um, this is going on. This is up on the internet right now. They have an instructional video on how to deflate tires. That's up on YouTube right now. YouTube will deplatform you if you question any fundamental narrative about the pandemic, about the vaccines, about the lockdowns, or even if Donald Trump won or lost. But they will let these criminals propaganda. What you just saw was an excerpt from my nightly show, The Ezra Levant Show. Every weekday, I do a monologue. Usually, it's about half an hour. Then I interview an interesting guest, and then we read my hate mail or my fan mail, whichever is more fun. It's only available behind a paywall, though. That's how we pay our bills here at Rebel News. We don't take a dime from Justin Trudeau. But the good news is it's only 8 bucks a month, about half the price of Netflix, and in addition to my weekly, sorry, my nightly show, you also get weekly shows from four other friends here at Rebel News. So you're getting 36 shows a month just for eight bucks. I think it's worth it. And even if you're not quite sure, do it anyways, because we rely on viewers like you to keep us free and independent. I promise you I'll never take a dime from Trudeau. Just go to rebelnewsplus.com and click subscribe. Thanks.